Some of the most fascinating work in neuroscience has been the work of Benjamin Leibitt, who uh, was a neuroscientist uh, in California uh, back in the mid-20th century. Leibitt was fascinated by the correlation in time between thought and brain activity. And he did a, a whole series of experiments in which he would place electrodes on the scalp of patients or people. And he would ask them to um, make decisions or think about things. And he would attempt to time the moment when they made a decision, when they thought about something, and correlate the moment they thought about something with the, the moment that there was a change in the brainwave activity. And he did a number of different experiments. One experiment has become very famous and ironically has been used by materialists to support materialism, although an understanding of what Leibniz actually found is quite the opposite. It refutes materialism. The experiment that Leibniz did was he would uh, ask a person to press a button when they decided to do so. So he put a button in, in front of them and he would have a clock with a sweep uh, hand and the person would just sit there and whenever they would decide, I think I'll press the button and push the button, he asked them when they made the decision to press the button, not when they pushed it, but when they decided to push it, just note the, the, the fraction of a second that was on the clock. At the same time, he was recording brain waves and he wanted to find out the moment you decide what happens in your brain. And what he found was, quite consistently, was that about perhaps half a second before you decide to do something, there's a spike in your brain, spike in your brainwave, that he called the readiness potential. And it was before you were aware of the decision to do anything. It was almost like an unconscious motive. And then you would decide a half second later and do it. So he found this quite consistently that there would be the spike in brain activity, then the conscious awareness of a decision, and then you go ahead and do what you decided. Materialists have used this to suggest that we are misled by thinking that we have free will. That what, what actually happens is that our material brain just sort of makes the decision, and then we kind of think that we decided, but we didn't. It was our neuro neurotransmitters and neurochemicals. But Leibniz didn't agree with that. Leibniz pointed out that he asked the subjects to do something more. He said, when you decide to do something, then decide not to. So you decide, I'm going to push the button. Oh, no, I'm not going to push the button. When they did that, he found that there was a readiness potential for deciding to push the button. But there wasn't a readiness potential to decide not to push it. And he said, he didn't prove the existence of free will, but he proved the existence of free won't. And that's what he called it, free won't. He said what he sees going on in the brain with his experiments is that we are bombarded with what are probably pre-conscious or unconscious motives. And that we are freely capable of deciding whether to comply with them or not. And the decision to comply with them is not material. There's no sign of any brain activity when you decide not to comply. And he pointed out, kind of interestingly, that free won't is a parallel concept to traditional religious ideas of original sin. That in a sense we have motives that are beyond our control. We can't stop the motives, but we can stop ourselves from doing it. And the free will, or the free won't, um, is scientifically demonstrable, and he demonstrated it. Uh, and uh, his experiments were brilliant. And he was a dualist, he was a property dualist. And he rejected the idea that his experiments proved materialism, he felt just the opposite, that it proved that free will was real.